So welcome to the Bonus Podcast, fellas. I am the host Donato Surbonas. We have Gitis Blazevichus, Augustus Shlauskas, and Aurimas Vudanavichus uh, behind the camera. Saturday morning, huh? 11 a.m. <laughs> Why? Why is it like that? <sighs> because Euroleague games are played on Fridays, and if we don't talk about this now, then we don't talk about this ever. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Nah, it's for real. Uh, we just wanted to give you as much fresh Euroleague takes as possible. That's why we're working on a slightly different schedule right now, but it's only to uh fulfill your needs of the year league takes and action because we had some interesting stuff happening starting from uh thursday's games uh with milos todosic cervena zvezda yesterday there was this big game between fenerbahce olympiakos uh we have playing teams confirmed we have a couple of playoff matchups already so let's just start talking about what's the the hottest in the year league right now and Fenerbahce versus Olympiakos game was crucial. We had yep. this overtime. <clears throat> Fenerbahce had two opportunities to close the game. They wasted four-point lead in the last 90 seconds. Five-point lead, actually. Four-point so- lead in the end of the regulation with uh, 90 seconds oh, okay. to play. And then in the overtime, mm-hmm. it was a five-point lead with two minutes uh, to play. They couldn't close the game, and Olympiakos got this big victory that led them to a Barcelona matchup. Fenerbahce will face Monaco. But how do you feel about the game itself? You said, uh, let's talk about the hottest things in the EuroLeague, and we can't start from Isaiah Kanan, I think. The guy had uh, just sick performance. I mean, the way he started the game mm. and the way he ended the game, it was like, yeah, let me do my job in the first quarter and in the overtime. Uh, he had like four free pointers, I think, in the first quarter, mm. and uh, he closed out that that quarter with a com- insane six step back free pointer to the left, and then those shots in the overtime. I mean, we were talking about underrated players a little bit, I think, three weeks ago, and I mentioned this guy, and I think he still doesn't get enough credit for what he's doing, you know, because offensively, what we saw, we all saw what he's capable. Yesterday, when he when he is hitting his shot, when he's feeling really great, uh, his confidence where was high for right from the start. He was cooking in you know isolation basketball, the department where Olympia Cost sometimes lacks mm-hmm. you know uh, talent, lacks uh, consistency. He was cooking, and uh, yeah, you know I mentioned underrated because his defense is also great. So that that was an amazing performance by him. And uh, I thought that was that should have been a foul when he made a free pointer against Marco Guduric, I think, in the overtime. But there were a lot of episodes where I was like, mm. this is a foul to this side, this is a foul to the other side. Not, it's not like one team was uh, uh, being uh, punished or the other one is, was awarded. So I thought that, that was a great game. It's, and, good you, um, it's good you mentioned referees because just before this podcast, we recorded the second Give Me Control episode and we watched four plays from Fenerbahce and Olympiakos game. That was two crucial uh, plays in the fourth quarter. Can I guess one? Over time. Can I guess course. one? Uh, Augustus Ni- already mentioned the first one, Isaiah Kanan's uh, three pointer. What about Nigel Hayes Davis travel? Did you yes, address that one? It yeah. was on the episode as well. Yeah, so yeah. I'm not going to spoil, you know, which one was correct or not. Refs did their mistakes, and actually. There was another one when I, I think uh, Fenerbahce got called for a foul, I think on the mid range shot for Olympia Cause, two plus one. I think it was Isaiah Kanan as well. Uh, and I thought, uh, where is the foul? Like, I think Kaleidas was there or, or Scotty Wilbekin. I don't remember. So uh, there was a, there were a couple of yeah. episodes where I thought. But th- over- th- that's why I strongly suggest you guys to subscribe BN Plus because this entire Give Me Control episode is available only for BN Plus members. And we also uh, analyzed four plays of this game. Again, refs did mistakes mm. uh and also there was this infamous Teodosic ejection with some insights that i wasn't even aware of when i was watching this whole outburst of Milos. Mm. right okay okay and uh, you know I'll, I'll be excited to watch people you're going to subscribe right <laughs> <laughs> okay okay you know people are always writing in the comments oh the refs the refs and that so if you really think so you should like this is another referee a former referee telling you really how it is like no bullshit so mm. 
we strongly suggest you. Anyway, yeah. What, what do what? I, what I are have, your thoughts about this game? My my thoughts were just an amazing game in terms of intensity. I don't know if uh, if I felt you know as intense of a game uh, before as this one, and it comes from you know the the importance of the game but just in general every possession was uh, incredibly intense and the defense i saw was something else i i don't remember a game that i watched where so many possessions went into the last seconds of the shot clock i was just like amazed how many possessions are decided in the last few seconds and that gave birth to those step back threes from uh Kanan. Uh, from Wilbekin as well. It was a lucky shot, by the way. This Kanan three-pointer was crazy. He just picked the ball from the ground oh, and one... just literally mm. shoot it, you know. But it wasn't the only one. It was like three or four True. plays like that where it just... On this... both sides. Yeah, on both sides. Wilbekin doing it on the other side. So that game was amazing. Uh, and, I mean, Isaiah Kanan really decided the game. With... He scored nine points in a row, if you count all the free throws and everything, at the he... end. And he made this crucial steal. And uh, that steal, yeah. I, I want to apologize to Isaiah Kanan when I said that uh, his defense, we shouldn't even compare to Keenan Evans. That was a dumb take. Sometimes yeah. you say stupid things from just <laughs> not watching enough games. Yeah. And that was one of them. I, I, and also another thought I had, you know, we were talking about Keenan Evans as a potential addition to Olympiacos and also kind of suggesting that if he would come over, it would be in place of Isaiah Kanan. Now... I don't really know if that's, you know, such a necessary move if if you're getting rid of Kanan. Uh should you even cuz he's been in the system and he just showed that he has that scoring potential that he had back in Unix. If you remember, he was the leader of that team. He he was doing the shushing and all that. And uh who's to say that if Keenan Evans uh, came over to Olympiakos, he wouldn't have this re- reduced role and he wouldn't look like Isaiah Kanan in, in Olympiakos. It's, I don't know. It's a tough decision for the GM because I don't know if that's a coincidence, but as soon as those news about Keenan Evans potentially and likely uh, joining Columbicos came out, I mean, we had this crazy game by Nigel Williams Gas who destroyed Partizan. Now we have Isaiah Kanan doing a tremendous job on both sides of the floor. And if, if Keenan Evans' arrival means that they will have to cut somebody, I don't know, man. That's a really tough decision because. I, in the ideal world, you want to keep all of them, but come on, in your backcourt, let's not, not going forget. going to be happy. <laughs> you have Ignaz Brzezikis as well, Shaq McKissick, there's Lorenzakis, Thomas Walkup, Keenan Evans, Nigel Williams, guys, Isaiah mm. Kanan. I mean, we're talking about 15 guys, mm. basically in those first uh, two positions. So it's a tough decision for if, if I'm the Olympiacos GM, to be honest Some, with you. Somebody is going to Milano, but uh, yo, I'm kidding. But uh, <laughs> no, come on, guys, Let, let's not put Keenan Evans and into the same tier as Nigel Williams Goss or or Isaiah Kanan. But in terms of Come on sco- now, like in terms of scoring, no, still way better. Way better. It's one game. He he is It is great. one game. It is one he game. Is Let's great. Be honest. He is great. Yeah. But but not at that level of of Keenan Evans. No. But, but what I'm saying is you don't know what Keenan Evans would look like in that uh guard yeah, lineup true. and with more people who can score true. and all that. That's true. That's true. Um, also, Nikola Milutinov stepped on the court, warmed up his feet a little bit. I, I just thought uh, it was like a reminder of how big of a body he is in the Euroleague court. You know, he, mm-hmm. he made a difference with playing very limited li- minutes. And I just it just reminded me that Olympiakos has this potential to have him on the court and have even greater uh, front line. And... Coming into playoffs, hopefully he would get into shape and and then. Yeah, yeah. man, but I, I was not sure if I was actually missing him. I mean, Olympiakos without Milutinov, they were the hottest team in the Euroleague alongside Monaco. I mean, they won nine of last ten. They produced the best defensive rating in the Euroleague, mm. and I just l- really love this, you know, uh, center lineup of Mustafa Fall, Musa Wright, uh, some other guys stepping in in, in that position. So. I'm just I'm just really intrigued to see how they're going to implement Milutinov and how it's going to change the dynamics of the game. Mm. I'm not saying that Milutinov is a bad player and it will make them worse. It will just definitely change the dynamics of, mm. of that team. So, I, mean, I don't know. Again, if I'm Barsokas, <laughs> that's a tough t- decision to make. You have to please everybody, uh, probably, mm. in this case. Milutinov mm. also has his own expectations. So, I don't but, know. And, and he's coming back just right before the playoffs. 
Yeah. Uh, I think Isaiah Cannon mentioned this in the in the post game interview. He's saying like we're finally all healthy. Like with Milo back, they're they're all finally almost everybody's healthy. Probably the healthiest uh, they have been this season, and uh, you know it's just a luxury to have in in case Mustafa Fall gets in foul trouble, super deep foul trouble in one of the playoff games. You still have Moses Wright and you still have Nikola Milutinov. That that that's not a bad thing. And I think a player of this car- caliber in the playoffs, he know he knows he's coming back after an injury. He does not expect that many minutes. Of course, he wants to play as much as possible. But at the same time, I think, you know, they are in Olympia cause. They understand their coach's philosophy and uh, they will be fine. They just care about winning and uh, they, they want that title. So, yeah, just think about what you just said. Their third center potentially is Nikola Milutinov. So uh, it's, a, it's a good luxury to have. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but to be honest with you, I was a bit disappointed that Olympiacos won that game because it kind of ruined my close to ideal playoff matchup scenario. Mm-hmm. I really wanted to see Fenerbahce going at Barcelona. And I'm sure that in, in two or three weeks, we would have heard a lot of a lot more stories about Sharuna Sisekevich, what went wrong in Barcelona, uh, what are the things that he didn't want to disclose yet. And I mean, Olympiacos against Monaco in the playoff series. I mean, knowing their rivalry, also given the the fact that Mike James was close to join Olympiacos and now potentially he can beat them, you know, on the way to the Final Four, that would have been dope, uh, serious. A revenge, possibly, you know. Monaco lost twice to Olympiacos in the last two years. Quarterfinal series, semifinal last year. That, and now they that have famous... home, co- home court advantage, yeah, unlike yeah. in the other seasons. Exactly, like they didn't have so... But I, I was also I, I also wanted those series, but at the same time, you know, I think uh, Olympia Kos really played a great game here, and then yeah, I, Isaiah Cannon will have a chance to shush the Barcelona crowd <laughs> okay. a couple of more times, you know, okay. a couple of more times. So. I, I actually, you know, I thought like you at the beginning, but then I was like, actually, now looking at this, it makes more like it. I'm more satisfied because it's something fresh. I mean, it's nice to have rivalries, but we've seen Olympiacos Monaco for the last two seasons. Like, I want to see something else. So maybe maybe I'm looking from this perspective that, you know, just new storylines. Let's bir- let's give birth to new uh, storylines and not uh, hang on the other ones uh, from before. And also Mike James versus Scotty Wilbekin, always a good matchup. Another thing I was thinking, uh, Mike James being contained by Sharuna Siskiewicz's defensive schemes with Nick Kalaitis being one of the most important pieces, tactically very interesting to watch but as well. But having bad yeah. record of the playoffs, you know, if you remember his shooting oh, uh, uh, nightmares. Yeah, yeah, no, exactly. I'm, I'm talking defensively, you know, yeah. how, how he's going to be contained, um, Mike James. And the Barcelona Olympiacos, I just think is very com- going to be, you know, a competitive uh, series, if I'm being honest, because both teams are very close. Uh, and Barca won both games, actually, in the regular they, season against they Olympiacos. They won both games, but the last game they played was in January uh, 10th, I believe. And after that, Olympiacos went 11-3. and three. And uh, Barcelona has been up and down. They, they finished with 8-6 and six after that game, so... I don't know. It seems like Olympiacos is a bit more on the rise, even though they're going to be in the fifth seed and they're uh, not going to have a home court advantage. I think at the moment, uh, Olympiacos is just a bit more in form uh, than Barcelona. So that's what makes this series so interesting to me as well. This is going to be a crazy defensive battle. Mm. And uh, we will have the playoff podcast yeah. pre- previewing it, I think, next week. But uh, Probably on Wednesday following the first play-in uh, day. That's that's the original plan for the playoff previews. Yeah, I thought you oh, said yeah, the sorry, regular next season awards. My bad. Regular yeah. season. Yeah, we are after going to we have, know the play in teams. Yeah, we're going to have yeah. regular season awards uh, next week on Wednesday following the the night of the first two play in games. Sorry. Mm. So yeah, these two teams are in the top three of defensive rating in the second round. So I think it's going to be low scoring. Uh, end of sh- end end of shot clock, a lot of possessions, as you usually see. Like to be honest, with Olympia cause, so it's going to be a really really nice battle. Yorgos Bartsakas against his former team, and uh, Isaiah Kanan also coming back to Barcelona. So I I think there will be some storylines here. 
Who do you think is more disappointed, Barcelona or Monaco, you know, getting those opponents? Maybe it was mm. better for Monaco to get Olympiacos or vice versa. Maybe uh, Barcelona should be happy now. I think Barcelona should be the 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 team that's not that happy mm. to get this. I don't know. I just think uh, Olympiacos are on the rise. I think they have been here. And... Uh, but that's interesting because, you know, we look at the game yesterday and obviously nobody wanted to lose, but uh, nobody was picking to play Barcelona. Nobody was, you know, uh, or actually, the yeah, the opposite, sorry. Everyone was picking. to. Okay, now yeah, I want to Nobody, <laughs> nobody okay. wanted to play Monaco. Okay, yeah, yeah, you don't you. want to play Monaco. Yeah, yeah, in, a, yeah. in a series, in a series, with you have Mike James and with the defense they have, with mm -hmm. Elio Cobo, Jordan Lloyd, they are all healthy. Mm -hmm. You know, with other guys playing as well, having confidence this season. Alpha Diallo blossom game. I, I I think they I think both teams wanted to win yesterday and play Barca. This or bonus episode is brought to you by the Hostinger, and it was never so easy to build your own website. It literally takes you a few minutes to, to start your website with the help of uh, AI, and it's perfectly suited for beginners like me because there's a drag and drop function. You can create your own logo by the help with the help of the AI. It helps you to create text. It makes it SEO friendly. And I have to be honest, when I tried it, I I was really intrigued to start my own website, even though I didn't have any idea what, what I could do. But it was just so fun to navigate the whole uh, AI website builder tool on, on the hosting, hosting uh, offers that it was just amazing experience for me. Yeah, Donatus is having a midlife crisis. He's trying new <laughs> things, you know, he's like, never done this, but oh, look at my website, you know what I mean? Okay, but last time when he said it, I actually went home and tried it by myself. You see, you see I'm a good and influencer. You, you, you influenced me at least, I hope. Did you like it? I like it. Man. I was, I was actually surprised because uh, I tried building my own website. I just typed in some keywords and uh, the AI actually made me a really great template. And then... In like 10 minutes, I dragged and dropped some items. I changed them, some buttons, some colors, some text there. And I was like, okay, in 10 minutes, you have a, a really great thing going on. And I'm like... And if you put I, in a I, bit more time, it will exactly. be even better. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> I, I wanted... Uh, I had a lot of things to do that day, but I just kept playing, you know, after those 10 mm -hmm. minutes. Oh, maybe if I change this, it, it, it looks super nice. So, And I think for you, it, it's a perfect tool to make your own portfolio because of all of your right. breakdowns and stuff, right. not just about building the website, but that all was, your portfolio to put all your work in one place. That was uh, what I actually made there. I just I just put the thumbnails of all mm. the videos that we have made for... So you're leaving Basket, Basket News. News. Oh my God. All oh, right. right. <laughs> per sources. Yeah, so that, that was cool. Yeah. I really enjoyed it. I, I don't need a website at the moment because I'm not leaving Basket News, but on my spare time, I like to play some games on my... PS5, uh, sometimes on PC, depending on what I'm doing uh, and which friends I'm playing with. And what I like about uh, Hostinger is that they actually provide a VPS. So that's a virtual private server, I believe is the What's term. That? It's basically when you're playing a game online with anyone, uh, you usually use a public server that's just created there so everyone can play online. Okay. With this, you can have your own server where there's going to be no latency or re reduced latency because you're creating a server geographically for, let's say, Lithuania, for, for your surroundings. And if you have friends, they can all join and you'll, you're going to have basically no latency. And that's very important in games like, you know, Counter-Strike or, or other first-person shooter ones, or that's not the first, well, it is. Anyways. It's a very good tool, and the problem always has been that it's very expensive to get your own private server. That's like, you know, a big, big uh, amount of money you need to pay. With Hostinger, $4.49 a month, and you have your own private server, that's really nothing. And uh, yeah, that's what I like about what, the, what else they provide besides the websites. Yeah, so okay. hosting a website builder is for gamers? for individual creators and loyal No, website builder members. is for, for, for you and the okay. private uh, gaming servers. I'm a me. beginner, yeah, I need a further explanation. You got, you got confused with the terms, but anyways, get, Hostinger. Get an additional 10% discount for all hosting plans by using the code BNEWS10.
10. Free domain as well as a free AI, AI website builder is included. But do yeah. you try to say that there are some teams that want to lose on purpose? <laughs> is that what you're uh, saying? No. In, in the EuroLeague? No. Uh, is this is happening? I, this, this, this can't be true. Wow. No, but there was one team, you know. Uh, oh, there I was. was. I was doing the Jalgris <laughs> broadcast, and I open up the, you know, the the app, and I see the result eighty eight forty four on Thursday. Was that the local uh, amateur league game you were watching? Or? No, that was Euroleague. You know. Oh, Euroleague. Yeah. Okay. okay. Uh, do you know this Cervena Zvezda team? Yeah, yeah. And, oh, the and, one that needed to win in order for Partizan to <laughs> to have a chance to advance. Yeah, to but, but do you hear yourself how ridiculous that is? They they needed a win for other team to have chances. They they, they didn't need a win here. <laughs> they did not need a win and here. Especially away. You know, if you're in your home crowd, okay. Uh, you the the can't disrespect yourself yeah, that yeah, much. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can't respect your fans. Yeah, that's true. But against a team who is like, I don't know, uh, top three uh, hottest team at the moment. Who needed a win mm -hmm. to be in the plane? That was that was a, an NFS win written all over it. I'm mm -hmm. not surprised they lost. They didn't have respect though to them to themselves. Like uh, some players and their body language, you could see they did not want to be there. And in some of those games, you can see which players actually love playing basketball, and others just like to do it for i don't know money fame or whatever because they're living a crazy good life or because just the job you know you're yeah. just doing a job and and since this game does not matter you do your job like whatever and mm -hmm. it seemed like uh from the beginning some players and their body language defensively they were like not just about the body language some decisions i was like watching Adam manga to me was was i mean probably the worst passing performance i've seen in years but i think every he, pass was just ridiculously yeah. bad because he was not i think he wasn't focused he wasn't concentrated like even though like exactly was forcing the game you know and yeah, he was just too, wild too much. with his passing i mean it was it I, was really bad game i just get i guess we just should say like i don't think that they went on the court to lose the game on purpose. I just think what we just said, yeah. game had no meaning to them. And as soon as they let the game go a little bit, when it was like 10, 15 points, they just gave up. Like at first I, I saw a lot of defensive efforts. Augusta says otherwise, but I mean, they, they allowed only 15 points in the first quarter. They were they were at least working defensively and trying uh, offensively. They were just missing good shots, really, of, to be honest. With you. And just just losing the ball all the time that, that that's what was happening but in terms of after like a, i don't know like second quarter first uh yeah so five second minutes quarter. into the second quarter i just saw that they just completely gave up and then third quarter it's just not watchable basketball they just not the open layups you know so i don't think any player has the sort of so, such a small ego to just say oh i'm just gonna come out, lose on purpose, embarrass myself. And, you know, how, how does that look the in front of the The biggest loss in the history of the club. Especially like that. So. And you're playing for the club that you have to respect, man. I mean, you have <laughs> a big uh, big crowd behind you. And, okay, thank God it was an away game. But you mm -hmm. have to respect your club, your, your fans, you know, because somebody was watching that game, although it didn't have any meaning. So, I don't know. But first of all, in my eyes, you have to be respectful for yourself. That's That's how it should start. So, it was... Just too many players not respecting themselves and the others. The the others they were just really frustrated. Miller Stodosic's mm -hmm. case was the best example. Mm -hmm. I mean, this whole ejection started from him being frustrated. And but the funny part was that he was frustrated that Darius Thompson was asking for a love from Rodrigo Bobois in this transition. And, you know, and probably he felt disrespected by their opponents. But if your team is disrespecting themselves already what kind of respect you're yeah. asking from from the uh, from your opponents i mean horrible look by zvezda i i, I really don't think that they lost on purpose i, I know that Giannis foropoulos was really mad yes, uh, about yes. his team and expressed himself uh, to his players but it just goes about the individuals mm -hmm. and the way they approached uh, that game and, yeah. and also some credit to anadolu fs they're they're the hardest <laughs> that's the worst part you know yeah. it took the whole spotlight from yeah. the one of the hottest teams in the league that we have at the moment. Wouldn't you say the hottest at the moment? Because there's Olympiakos with nine and nine games and nine wins in ten games. Mm. Monaco, they're really hot. Okay. But of course, FS belongs mm. to the top. But just and, and, and also just for Partizan, you know, 
you, like uh, Kevin Punter came out, you know, all very obvious, all, all those comments. You know, you shouldn't be in a situation where your rival needs to win a game in order for you to have a playing chance. So that's in the first place. You shouldn't be like in that position. You know, they, they, they just lost some, so many games at the last minutes of the game. And that's on them more than just, you know, you shouldn't make it about, oh, these guys just lost on purpose so that we don't uh, advance. No, he, he said he was watching Netflix movie. Oh, yeah. He just figured out Emily, the movie. The Criminal. Yeah. <laughs> oh, okay. That's, what that's, he like, said. that's like uh, Wade Baldwin. This is the Flash. Of course. Flash <laughs> sign. Yeah. What do you mean? Of course. Uh, we, we do the Flash. Yeah, it's very popular. <laughs> no, but set. it's just, yeah, what Gita said. And, and it's like, uh, it's so obvious. They, they let that game go against Olympia Cause, and they let that game go in Stark Arena versus Bayern, where they didn't foul against uh, Sylvain Francisco, and he made a game winner. Those two games at home, you win, you are in the plane. So you can't you can't be asking for Cervena Zvezda to win away against FS and that then that's the, but at the same time I didn't mention like Alba showed an example mm -hmm. in in Athens. And exactly. uh I'm glad I remembered it now because they fought. They fought uh, with everything they had. Probably because they don't have anything to play uh, since uh 10th of October, <laughs> but uh you know <laughs> They they thought they gave Olympiacos a fight and uh, they were trying until the end and they were respecting themselves. Cervena Zvezda didn't do that. That's simple. Mm. Yeah, and I mean FS. I've just checked the standings after round twenty five. It was ten weeks ago, ten rounds ago, and you see FS in the sixteenth seed, uh, nine and tied. Uh, they were nine and sixteen or nine and fifteen together with Jargiris, basically at the bottom of the standings. At, the, at that moment, we were already we have buried the Jargiris season. At that moment, yeah. we already thought that and, it's and, over. And we buried Jargiris season, and they actually beat FS by twenty six points at the home. So we basically put FS at the same grave. Yeah. And then they went on this crazy finish: eight wins in ten games. They produced the best offensive rating in the league. The best net, net rating, according to Bibliotics as well, as well, they were outscoring their opponents by 15.5 points per 100 possessions. Second best true shooting percentage, completely changed picture of the team. Shane Larkin and most importantly, Will Clyburn stepping up in a different and a bigger role. Darius Thompson, it looked like he was, you know, pulled uh, aside, completely different body language, mood in the team and their coach uh, Miatovic. So... Tremendous job by FS. And it, it just one more time. I'm, I mean, I already feel quite old enough to remember all these crazy late season runs starting from Jalik mm -hmm. in 2018, I think, or 19, when they won six in a row against some big opponents and made it to the playoffs. It kind of reminds me this FS team. The difference is that, and the important thing is that this is freaking talented team. You have Shane Larkin, Will Clyburn, Darius Thompson in a different role, but still he's a really good player. Elijah Brandt, Rodrigo Bobois, you know, a lot of a lot of really good uh, players on that team. And if I'm Real Madrid, I'm, no. I'm not a habit at all, you know, watching them. I mean, who knows? Maybe Efes will will be the, the, the seventh seed. And, you know, nothing... Uh, Efes can cannot, yeah, sorry, Efes cannot bad, be seventh seed. Uh, but nothing changed after Ataman left. Efes is uh, playing, is getting to uh, <laughs> play their, their game at the end of the season, not not yeah. in the beginning, you know, <laughs> like it was with uh, Ataman. They were struggling always, and that's why there were always talks, and that's why Shane Larkin said, oh, you all talk, but we, we still do the job. <laughs> nothing changed. And yeah. also shout out to Ersan Osmani, my new favorite player. He's been just my... You know, just these dunks that I've seen from him and uh, shots, fadeaways. I don't know where he came from. I, I just like him a lot now. <laughs> yeah. And no, honest. Uh, again, just a reminder, subscribe BN Plus for this Give Me the Control episode, because as I mentioned, we, we broke down this Milos Todosic play, a lot of interesting things. And also we're talking two days, two days uh, after it happened. And actually Gitas and Augustas had a short timeout episode, our new show as well, in order not to be forced to wait for the uh, podcast, sometimes even almost a week. We're just giving our quick reactions on the hottest things. And uh, just a spoiler alert, Gitas and Augustas said some horrible things about Zvezda players, you know, on that show. So I really recommend to subscribe baskinnews.com slash plus and join Beyond Plus community. We already have almost 900 subscribers and a special shout out goes to our GMs, 
Dave Gassman, Janut Gergescu, Kimon, SportsCardsTime.com, and a couple of other anonymous uh, GM subscribers, and also our All-Stars, Evaldas Uaba... Uab- Labai Ameritus, Gabrielius Serva, Nikozinio, TVLT21, Koki, Baltvarne, Nick BG, Igor, Euroleague Fantasy Talks, Victory, Costas B, Goldflake, Tesseract, Olandas Thomas, and Paris. And yeah, guys, also if you subscribe, you get that uh, amazing manifesto wrote, uh, written by uh, Donatas about how much he hates uh, Panatinai cost. So wow. make no, sure, it was, it make was sure to check written it by Ritis, actually. Well, it was it a make, contribution from both. It would make way more sense. Contribution And from both. also, you see how Donatas actually make arguments why Partizan is so much better than Cervenas Vezda yeah. and why yeah. he likes them as their number mm. one team above Monaco, to be honest. Even I'm glad that, nobody well, of you yeah. bring up some only fans jokes or whatever. So you kept Don't it worry. pretty professional. Ne- n- next time you do this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. And that wasn't the only game that was important yesterday, Olympia Cost Fenerbahce. Is that where we're going now? Yeah, that's true. Yep. That's true. Yep. There but, was another very important game to either be eighth or tenth. And which is I think it's basically delivered. You could even say it. It was a game you keep your chances to be in the playoffs, mm. or your season is done. Because so you're saying Virtus season is done? Yeah, yeah. They're <laughs> playing away against <laughs> FS, mm-hmm. and we just praised Man. FS like they're gods, you know. But let, let, let's uh, stick with the game a little bit in the begin uh, for for the beginning. I think uh, I just had this game on the side a little bit while watching Olympiakos and Fenerbahce. Um, and, you know, in the beginning, I was like, oh, you know, Virtus is taking this like I predicted. They're going to break the losing streak, all that, because the ball was moving. Everything's really nice. Basconia's defense is not there. And then just fast forward, I see Basconia pick it up on picking it up on defense. They started playing much more physically and then Virtus couldn't create anymore. And then a lot of frustration shots from Bellinelli later. Uh, Basconia is ahead. Cody Miller, McIntyre, and uh, Marcus Howard, more specifically, to be honest, just took mm-hmm. over the game and delivered seventh loss in a row. <laughs> seventh in a row. Yeah. Oh. Before Virtus- the most important part of the season. Doesn't sound good, right? Doesn't sound like where you want to be. Uh, Meanwhile, Basconia, I mean, we were about like, whether they're going to make the plane actually we, we with the were, shape that they when, were in when Jalgeris was still still had chances we were thinking okay so Bosconi is going to lose the last few games they're going to finish with 16 wins and if Jalgeris gets to 16 we have an advantage that was the narrative in Lithuania mm. but Basconia won uh, yeah, and they won two big games yeah, first of games. all uh, a game against uh, Real, Madrid, Real Madrid now game. this yeah. important victory away as I mentioned and of course also, thanks to Marcus Howard, who is uh, producing historically good basketball. Uh, I've checked that Marcus Howard is the first ever ever Euroleague player to record multiple 30-plus games twice in the Euroleague history. And the second all-time to score 34-plus um, in consecutive games after uh, Alexei Shved. And as Chimo Moneka described him, he's the best scorer in the Euroleague. We actually have, we already have best free man, best scorer. We already had a couple of him. Yeah, the players themselves just decide that. So. Yeah, we don't <laughs> need to do any good. We don't, we, don't need, we don't need to do our job, you know. Yeah, and that's fine. Yeah. but thank you, thank you guys. Well, just one stat about Marcus Howard: nine games, last nine games, all tournaments. So I I include ACB. And if uh, there there was one game where he's like had two points against Zaragoza in 16 minutes, but if you exclude that game, he's averaging 28.9 points per game, 47% shooting, 44% Mm. on threes, and he's taking almost 13 of them per game, making Mm 5.6. All of that in 27 minutes. So this guy is averaging 29 points in Europe in 27 minutes. And the two of the strongest leagues that we have, Euroleague and Spain, ACB. Mm. That's, That's just illegal numbers, and what he did to Virtus was another example. Like, they tried everything. But Basconia had an answer, like, if it's an off-ball play, he just reacts how his defense plays him. If they cut under, he stops, he turns the, turns the uh, angle, shoots it. If, if there is a pick and roll, they do this an angle where they change the, the angles of the screen, like Matt Costello at the mm-hmm. last time. Bam, he's wide open for that split second. That, that's, that's all he needs. Pulling up in transition, one-on-one, so quick. Uh, 
I mean, he's just on an, on a ridiculous uh, run right now recently, and uh, wow, I, I've not seen numbers and, and like this in Europe. Our concern throughout the season has been his like consistency, really, that he defense defense, defense. Yeah. <laughs> no, 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 but. Uh, <laughs> I'm just talking about offense because sometimes he has a game where he's shoot, shooting three for 18 or some shit like that. And then he has a game where he's doing this. So uh, just a good sign for Basconia fans that he's in a very hot form right now. I don't know if that sounds a bit su- suspicious, uh, what I just said, but... <laughs> sus. <laughs> sus. Bro. Um, but but yeah, yeah, it's yeah. not it's not one thing with, with shooters like this. It's not possible to make shots of this difficulty in every game. Every that, yeah, true. that's true. That's out of the question. So, the, those games, there will be those games that, that they are going to happen. But to have him, like you said, playing at this form right now, when the most important time is coming, that that's just amazing. But I also would say, like, uh, if we're gonna go into the predictions later. That's what I'm concerned about in, in terms of Basconia, that they're so dependent on his performance uh, offensively. Because the ball is, a lot of the times it doesn't move from his, uh, from his hands. If, if, if he gets the ball, he's probably going to score, uh, going to shoot. And if he shoots, it's about a miss or a make, you know? He, he has, in, in that same run, I'm looking at the stats right now, he shoots almost 20 times per game. He's, guess his uh, assist average. One? Two, one point six. Mm. <laughs> in between our, he wasn't guesses. signed, you know, for for yeah, making exactly. it's just yeah. like exactly. Nigel Hayes Davis I'm not, I'm told after a fifty point game, right? I'm not saying they anything. have Cody Miller McIntyre, you know, to get mm. a triple yeah. double. So yeah. why did no? Why he's did he good. He's good. Assist? It's just it's just crazy. To almost twenty shots per game. So I imagine you know other teams are trying double teaming you, triple teaming you, but Marcus Howard still finds a way to shoot that <laughs> yeah, shot like yeah. crazy. Is yeah. he going to make the all Euro League teams? I don't uh, think so. I don't. I, I just would say no, no chance, because that's not what the European is gonna see. Uh, or who, who's actually electing those teams? Who's mm. who's choosing who's gonna go into those teams? Stephen A. Smith. Because <laughs> if it media was media is involved as well, but it's like a you know big formula of who's uh-huh. who's involved actually. Okay. I don't remember. But really there well. are. But on, is there are only on two your, teams, right? Your league team. Yeah. There are only, only two teams. teams, so four guard spots, right? I mean, it's yeah, positionless uh, basically. What do you mean positionless? It's positionless, man. So, you can so have I can have guards. five guards? I think so. Not sure about five. Are you sure? So. I don't think four? so. I've never seen it like that. Are you sure? Yeah, I'm I've quite never... sure. I'm quite sure. But anyways, I, I don't think... Uh... If it's four guards, then yeah. no. Because yeah. then like Mike, Shane, um, you have... Uh, you can I think Campazzo. Yeah, Campazzo. And Wade Evans, Baldwin. you could put in Wade Baldwin. And Evans. Last year, already looked team, uh, second team. Mike James, Darius Thompson, Wade Baldwin, Kevin Punter, Nikola Mirotic. Nikola that's Mirotic. some bullshit, man. Yeah. Oh, that's what oh, is this four team? Guards. Yeah. What is this team? Mirotic is playing the the shooting guard in Milano. <laughs> the first team actually <laughs> had Edith Tavares, Matias Tazor, and Sasha Zenkov. Okay. Well, anyways, okay. what was the first he's, team? He's right. Uh, Lorenzo Brown, John Musa. Sasha Vizenkov, Matthias Lazort, and Eddie Tavares. That's also bullshit. Yeah, that's, I don't know how that does not are... make any sense. But okay, whatever. Yeah. Yeah. Mm, I think I had to say something, or maybe not. Okay, so. Do, do, you, do you have Marcus Howard on your all your I'm team? not sure yet. Uh, you're I'm making sure. these questions and you don't give answers. Bro. Because we have a podcast for that <laughs> on. Okay, let's move then on. Then why, are you, why let's you move ask on. me? <laughs> I, I need some, you know, I need some spicy, spicy shit. Takes. I need some spicy things. No, no because you. we're just praising this crazy guy. It's illegal. Oh, he is unbelievable. We've never seen anything like that. And he's not making your, you know, all your team. Because I was talking about scoring. Okay, okay. I mentioned if, points. If, if Basconi makes the playoffs. No. What's then? Okay. No, who are you taking out? I have, okay, four guards. Who are you taking out? Mike, Shane, Wade, and Campazzo. Which one you take out out of these four? There's no yeah, way. I mean, it will be more than four guards, that's for sure. Yeah, but I believe that it Kim and Evans then is my fifth pick. Musa, you can add to that list if it's guards. I mean, you can. I mean, add, I'm, I'm not picking I, Musa this year. No, no, no. Last year he had a bigger role, better numbers. I'm not taking Musa. I think Real Madrid deserves just the competition players. among guards is just just mm. too crazy. I mean, if and then, and then also if we are leaving Marcus Howard, you know. 
out of the all your teams, it's it's already kind of crazy. It tells it's crazy. Would you put Kendrick Nunn in there? Oh my god, we also have Kendrick Nunn. Mm. I don't know, man. I don't want to be on that podcast to be honest with you. <laughs> Really? <laughs> you're burning too many bridges with the players I, burning, I know that burning all the bridges man <laughs> your, okay. D, your dms will be lit after that one uh, <laughs> so uh are we is it safe to assume that we all see fs and virtus being a one-sided uh fs is gonna win and nobody's predicting virtus right i i predict 88 44 around that <laughs> mark you know i've seen that happening this week no i'm kidding but yeah i think fs will win yeah they're gonna play at home. Last time they played at home, it was a blowout game, and and I know you know it's a single game. Anything can happen, but you can't ignore seven losses in a row and one of the hardest teams. Like, no, if logic look, doesn't make sense, you know. If if, if look, look at Virtus, uh, uh, everything is second in red. second round. Uh, you know, can all red. See, can we see this on camera? Hey, Amen. <laughs> it's just red. It's Twenty four. We're it's, gonna put it on. on it's just on screen red as well. So. Every, everything is red. Third worst offensive team in the second round. Fourth worst defensive team in the second round. Second worst net rating team in the second round. Mm -hmm. Against uh, first offense and first net rating. I've Come mentioned on. you the standings and the Anadolu FS position in the standings uh, after round 25. And I'm actually looking at Virtus' position in that situation. So 10, 10 rounds ago, Virtus third. was third. And they had six win difference over Anadolu Efes, who were 16th. How <laughs> the table just switched, so. Yeah. Turned. Turned, yeah. <laughs> um, Spoons yeah. after dinner, sorry. Isn't this the Spoons biggest- Spoons after dinner. <laughs> isn't this the biggest fall? I don't know. Do you remember a, a bigger fall than that from third to 10th? I mean, if Flayum wasn't here, they would be just out of the playoffs. Man, that's crazy. That's crazy. It also tells something about EuroLeague and how competitive uh, mm. it is. But can, I mean, you, we already discussed this FS Virtus thing. It's kind of, it's just, it looks clear. Yeah. But what do you think about the, uh, you know, final uh, playing teams? Okay, so that I think... advance to the playoffs. Yeah, yeah. so I think Maccabi wins that game at home. They, at home. <laughs> By the way, Maccabi lost the last game against Basconia. Just, just for I the know, record. I know, I know. I saw, I saw the box scores as well. But uh, I just think Lorenzo Brown, Wade Baldwin, uh, good, good enough defensively to stop Marcus, ha well, contain Marcus Howard or give him difficult shots, and um, just a more. Cons I'll, I'll always pick a more consistent team in in a single game, even though anything can happen. And also, I mean, Maccabi, I think, is making the playoffs regardless if they win or lose uh, the first one. Uh, but I'm predicting Maccabi to, f to win the first one. And then uh, between Basconia and FS, I don't know, this is first I'll, I'll give my predictions and you guys can, can give yours. But I think Basconia and FS is going to be that that uh, competitive matchup. I think uh, Maccabi, Basconia, I'll, I'll, give, I'll give it to Maccabi quite easily. But Basconia, FS, uh, they, they had... Uh, Last game in in Vittoria was a twenty point loss for Basconia. Oh, at home? Yeah. Wow. And now they're gonna play at, again at, at home. Uh -huh. But um, I don't know. I think in one game as if well. Lose, yeah. There's gonna be a a different meaning for that game than the one that they played where they lost at tw twenty points. Uh, but also atmosphere in one game. I think the home crowd, all that, will be a big factor. That's why I see it. As a very close matchup between FS and Basconia, and I will just shoot in the dark uh, and go with Anadolu FS uh, to make the playoffs as an eight seed and Maccabi as a seventh. What about you guys? I'm also going with Maccabi and FS, and I'm ready for all this trash talk coming from Chima Moneke <laughs> after they will <laughs> make you know that he's going to. Actually. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I just, I just, I just cannot trust them. They are so inconsistent. At the same time, they can be really good. And I wouldn't say that they depend on Marcus Howard shooting night. They depend on their defense, defense their yeah. focus, because they can be really, really, really good team. But in some cases, they, they make something crazy like Tadej Sidekerski did against Real Madrid in that end of the game with this crazy pass that basically almost uh, cost them the game. So, I don't know. Speaking of consistency, Maccabi, despite some challenges, they're showing consistent basketball. They were showing winning basketball. And FS, they're just too hot to handle at the moment, Yeah, in my eyes. Yeah, and just to, just to add to that, what you just said about defense, yeah, I agree, like... The Virtus game, 
Basconia won because of defense, not because of Marcus Howard's shooting. Like that, but also defense. They just uh, picked it up so much. When it mattered the most. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I agree with you, but I'm going against the logic here. I'm going to pick Maccabi and Basconia mm. to be there. But uh, the, the logic is there. Maccabi is, is in all of our uh, picks. Just because they have to win only once. And uh, they are going to play both games at home. 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 Mm-hmm. But, uh, yeah, I'm picking Basconia uh, against Logic. I think, uh, yeah, like you said, one game, anything can happen. And although your pick, your picks make more sense, and uh, you just don't want I, that. I just, I, just, I just hope for that surprise element. You don't want the heat from Chima Moneke, which yeah. you won't get personally, but Donatas would get it. <laughs> you just want to be the one uh, that uh, Chima was no, Chima is also coming after him as well. <laughs> yeah, that's for no, sure. no, no. But he just picked Basconia, so he's gonna say ah, the only guy in your so in Will your Clyburn whole then. podcast believed then. in us. Ah, don't worry. <laughs> oh Chima yeah, well, well, Chima William Clyburn. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah. like I said, I'm going against logic, but I think Maccabi and Basconi. Uh if you're Real Madrid, first of all, let's uh, let's give a reminder that Madrid became the first new format EuroLeague team to reach 27 wins in the regular season. Uh, and we have Panathinaikos that had probably the historic turnaround uh, in the EuroLeague history as well. Nobody else before climbed up to by 15 positions mm-hmm. in consecutive seasons. And what was interesting that Panathinaikos last season, they were 17th. This year, they're second. Their winning record was 11 and 23. <coughs> and now this year, it's 23, 23 and, 11. <laughs> and 11. And actually, this historical jump is even bigger than what Ataman did in FS when they made this EuroLeague bottom team and coming back-to-back uh, EuroLeague uh, champions. So. A lot of good things uh, to say about both uh, both of these teams, and which is interesting because when I brought up Panathinaikos' name before the podcast, I mean, let's talk about their historical second seed and, and stuff like that. You said that there's no, there's no need, uh, no reason to talk about them, and I decided to still throw you a question, quick question for it's you, good, you know, uh, since you're not cross, prepared for on, that. Yeah. I mean, you hate Panathinaikos too much. Let's show them some love. So, <laughs> Ergen Ataman for the coach <laughs> the of the year, fuck? in or out? Ergin Ataman for the coach of the year? Yeah. Okay, who are the other candidates? That's gonna help. In my eyes, you said you said awards, we're doing awards on Wednesday. Now you're saying uh, Ergin Ataman <laughs> for the coach of the year. What is this hosting, man? Uh, you no, might really. be not on that podcast, so who knows? This let's, could have let's been... Let's hear your wow. opinion. Wow, yeah. wow. Yeah. You're on a hot seat right now, man. <laughs> wow, uh, okay, okay, I see you, I see you. Ergin Ataman for manager of the year. I'm in. Who is the coach of the year, though? As in, for a guy who got the right guys together, Ergen Ataman for, for the manager of the year, I'm in. Coach of the year? Coach slash GM of the year. Yeah. When it comes to coach of the year, what are we looking at? We're looking just at the results or how, you know, is the team overperforming with the, the squad they have? I, I mean, I would say Barsocas coach of the year also, even though they're only fifth you could argue oh, with on, this is this is anti Panathinaikos mm, show. Really, so we take Bartzokas really. for coach of the year. Wow. The first name no, no. you brought up was Bartzokas and give him the award because of the roster. That's what I'm talking about. I'm talking about who overperformed with the roster they have. Did but, they really overperform? But they have a great roster. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Nikola Milutinov, the third center in the team, and he's you're not talking playing. About he's not roster, playing. He's, yeah, let's be let's be honest. He's second, not third, but yeah. <laughs> No, but really, but who is coach of the year? Then? What do you think about? Uh, I think just Roger, Mateo. Roger Grimal's case as well. That's a good case. Rookie, rookie coach. Rookie coach. That's huge. Uh, I, and we okay. all, yeah. a lot of people thought that Barcelona is not going to yeah. stay on the top. And to be fourth, to have a home court amazing. advantage, that's huge. That's amazing. This is like where I, where I, you know, if you've seen this meme, this is like Roger Grimau. Roger I'm, Grimau. Sorry. Yeah. Roger Grimau. Roger Grimau. I'm sorry. I didn't know your game. Uh, you know, I'm guilty of that. This, mm-hmm. this is the place mm-hmm. where we say it. So I you, think you can argue about his impact. That's for sure, uh, because but, but just to have yeah, because there's a lot of talent of that team. There was continuity on that team, so you know it's right. it's all, always a big question mark. You know what's the input of the head coach, uh, especially knowing Roger Grimau's style. He doesn't have this strict philosophy like some other head coaches that 
uh, completely changed the picture of the dynamics of the team. But, I mean, as the EuroLeague uh, rookie head coach, that's huge to have yeah. Barcelona. But four, to be honest, team. all of like the first four teams have a lot of talent on their on their roster. So how do you value the influence of the coach with those teams? I mean, all four teams in, in the top four. Maybe Panacos is the only one where I would say actually, okay, Ergen Ataman, coach of the year. Now I switch teams. <laughs> <laughs> now you're just saving your ass, right? No, I, I love both. I love I, both. I, <laughs> no, I actually don't care. <laughs> for fuck's sake, I don't care. You, you just I love you both. just said too many things. You know? Okay, if if not Grimao, you mentioned Chus Mateo, right? For to me, I would I would give it to Chus Mateo or or or, or uh, Eric Nadema. Actually. Shonas Escouch has just took a team that wasn't supposed to make the playoffs and uh, put them in the sixth seed. What? They weren't supposed the to make the playoffs? At the moment, he took them. They didn't look like they would. I don't know, man. No, I don't know. He took over a really good team. I mean, but they were playing bad. They're better, but still. But they were playing bad. What? I'm what? not saying that uh, his impact was not significant. I'm just not sure if that's uh, these arguments are enough for the coach of the year. Award. No, maybe coach of the year is a bit of a stretch. I'm, uh, I'll agree. No, I agree, but but they but Fener was playing bad and he he took them to another level. Yeah, it just but I still like think it's he took over a really bad. Shit so team who do you think roster. it is, Ataman? I think Mateo or Ataman. And whenever you are, whoever guy you are picking, I'm okay with that because both deserve it. Mm. But I think it's between these these two guys. Uh, if Basconi makes the playoffs, I'm thinking about Dusko Manoš. We're talking about the head coach who was fired, who took over the team that really played bad didn't have any identity so he changed the identity and you know he brought them to the playoffs that would be a hell of a accomplishment how many times an eight seed team uh, got that award though i don't i don't remember i, I always as as much as i remember i don't care about you know no. the final okay. i mean we're not trying to guess who will who's, win the who's award. gonna we're win just, just thinking who, 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 who deserves yeah yeah. Okay. yeah what about uh can a coach get coach of the year if he has coached in Ten, Ten games. games like Miatovic <laughs> did. Yeah, I'm thinking about him. Yeah. Yeah. Highest, the, highest winning percentage. <laughs> the biggest he has impact. his case. Yeah, he the obviously has impact. his case. We already mentioned these standings, you know, that Evans were in few, uh, ten runs ago. So those players, they, those players started suddenly playing defense the next day. The same happened with Basconia, yeah. but I just think, yeah, I don't know, but is actually underrated as well. Okay, so let's list every coach and give <laughs> the respect to everyone so that nobody gets mad. But Ataman for <laughs> no, sure has no. his case. I yeah, mean, no, you, no, no. You can call him a GM, but at the same time, it's also a coach's responsibility to give the freedom to his players and to rely on the talent and on the, on yeah. the decision making of his players. That's his style, that's his philosophy, and it has been a winning philosophy. So I know in Chus Mateo's case, they won the Euroleague last year, they brought Facundo Campaso. Mm. Yeah, but I the way know. they dominated the first half, they basically won the regular season in 17 games. So we had first uh, regular season, uh, first half of the season awards already. We're talking about the regular season awards. Did they, you they, like them they in still the second won part? It. They still won it. Yeah, but I know. Yeah, call me back in June when they have another title. I will. I will call you. Um... <laughs> Did you want to talk about? Uh, did you want to talk about uh, from the perspective of Panikos and Real Madrid, which teams they would rather face uh, from the play-in, or is that not very? If you have any hot takes, no, no, about no. That. I, th I thought that was one of the opponents. topics. I don't, I don't, I don't think there is a big of a difference. I mean, if you if get, you, I mean, if you get Virtus instead of uh, oh, okay, but anybody get, else, basically, well, that's, we don't, that's we don't expect win. that to happen. Obviously, yeah. we expect either Anadolu Efes or Basconia to be in that eight spot, and we all agreed on the seven to be Maccabi. So, Maccabi, I guess, is a good thing to have. Uh, I mean, it's a very dangerous team, but at least you're playing three games at home. Well, if it's a five game series, if it go goes to five games, you'd play three games at home and two games in an empty gym. So from that st standpoint, I guess you would want to have Maccabi because otherwise you're playing uh, proper away games. And uh, if FS makes it, I think that they're just a bit dangerous in terms of how hot they got. But whoever gets Real Madrid is just going to finish their season in the playoffs. 
Yeah, it's honest. not the first case then when just right before the playoffs, we have some great hot team in the EuroLeague. I remember this Maccabi case a couple of seasons ago. And Madrid is in a kind of a slump and everybody feels that, okay, this might yeah. be it. This might be it. I remember and, this. And, 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 and then, you know, Frio. <laughs> yeah. So I'm not saying it will happen to, to FS. I think that now they're in a better situation than Maccabi was a couple of years ago. But it's just about Real Madrid. They're going to... They're gonna switch. Uh, they're gonna click the button. They're gonna switch, and they're going to be different team than they were in the last uh, few rounds. Uh, we should celebrate Paris basketball joining the Euroleague family. I mean, that's should what should happen. Uh, they won the Euro Cup at first, but it doesn't mean that. Apparently, it doesn't mean that you automatically uh, get into the Euroleague like it happened last year with Gran Canaria. But all the signs show that Paris basketball uh, will be there. Uh, and which is a, an alarming thing uh, for the other current wildcard holders because if Burg won the Euro Cup, I was told that it was uh, very unlikely for them to join the Euro League. Uh, so, but we had a situation where <clears throat> the second team, the finalist, made the the Euro League, the Euro, Euro Cup finalist, Partizan, I think. Uh, no. No, 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 Partizan was even no, that wasn't. They never made it no, to no, the no. final. Someone, this was Monaco. And Monaco, right? Made the Monaco and Virtus. Monaco, they won. Two teams made the yeah. yeah. And I know Virtus. Monaco won against Unix. Oh yeah. So Someone maybe that made was it the from year. the second place. I remember. But this year it was possible that only the champions. Only the champion. Okay. Yeah, and then there will be this wild card holders race, but mm. not the on court performances will will decide. So. So good thing Paris is closer than Gran Canaria. <laughs> it's a nice thing to have. And. No, the best thing is that we're Who's bringing a different basketball philosophy. Exactly. We're bringing a rookie EuroLeague head coach mm. who deserved this chance, Thomas Isolo. We're likely bringing TJ Shorts if he stays. For and, sure. Uh, I wouldn't say for sure because, of course, it <clears throat> makes the most sense for him to stay. But Paris basketball, even if they're making the EuroLeague, they're not going to have a high increase in the budget. So if TJ Shorts gets a huge deal from the other EuroLeague team, it's hard to say no. But a few episodes ago, you said that nobody's going to get, uh, nobody's going to take TJ Shorts. I didn't say that. I, I even said that TJ Shorts got a EuroLeague offer last summer and he refused it. So okay, he will make it one way or another. It just now it's for sure because mm. Paris yeah. uh, made their way to the EuroLeague. But is this for him to be able, like last summer, I remember this, I, I said... <laughs> They're going to win the Euro Cup, and for TJ Short, this is the best way. You know, he's got a transition season, and now he's in a roster with the known philosophy where everything revolves around him and a perfect offensive style that fits uh, the, the speed that he has and the skills that he has. And so, I think it makes perfect sense for him to stay, show out himself in the Euroleague in a philosophy that he knows. I think he will be great. You know. In, in that same setting, he will be great even in the EuroLeague. The guy's EuroLeague material. And like in my eyes, this was the most f fun team to watch this season. The way they play offense is just so beautiful, so quick. Everybody knows so well what they need to do. Their intensity is another level. And when I was writing an article about them, I see their offensive rating in the Euro Cup. I know it's the Euro Cup, so it's mm. easier to have higher offensive ratings. But... 128 offensive rating. I've never seen that. Like NBA, NBA kind NBA's of record is 122 or 121 or something. Like in, in these seasons, you know, every, every year, NBA has a record of offensive rating, all-time best. And uh, Paris basketball has it beat by, by a couple of five points or whatever. So that's just amazing. Thomas Isolo is probably one of the... I, I would say the most prom promising coach in Europe, and I really, I'm really gra glad that they won, and I'm re really looking forward to see them in the Euroleague. Yeah, it's interesting. Two two, Fre uh, two French teams joining the Euroleague in the last few years now. Uh, Euro Cup. Yeah, we'll have three of them now, and we'll see. I don't know. I mean, if Aswell is continuing on this uh, trajectory of being in the last, and they're bottom. decreasing the budget for the next year. Mm. So, who is in danger? Uh, losing the spot? Um, I would say Valencia. Right now, I would say it's Valencia. Mm. And if you had to say another team, second place? Um, I would say Alba, 
But since they but, had this story with the EuroLeague, with some sh- sort of right. agreements they made, I think now they're going to stay. So okay. are you sure Cervantes, Vesda and Partizan are... Oh, I'm quite confident about that. That they're going to stay? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I just don't see EuroLeague, right. you know, cutting one of those EuroLeague teams. Okay. One of those Belgrade teams. And just real, real quick on something. Uh, we had some national teams news uh, over the last week. So Amazing. Mike James potentially joining France. I mean, no longer right now, but still he was in the consideration uh, of French uh, Na- National Basketball Federation. They were thinking about uh, giving him the passport. And then Josh Nebo potentially teaming up with Luka Doncic in Slovenia. The That's a cra- that would be a crazy fit. Josh Nebo on that Slovenia team, insane. Are you saying I mean, a good fit or a bad fit? An amazing fit. To, to, for Luka to have this kind of a lob threat, like he basically has in Dallas, you know, Daniel Gafford. And, uh, and oh my God, I forgot the other center name. But basically they're playing, Derek Lively. They're playing mm-hmm. the, the same style as Josh Nebo does. Mm-hmm. You know, they're in the air for so longer. There was a stretch where Daniel Gafford wasn't missing, wasn't missing a field goal simply because he plays with Luca and Kyrie and all he needs to do is dunk the ball, catch the ball and dunk it. So I think Josh Nebo is a perfect fit there. And uh, But at the same time, I'm going to stay on, on my line. What I said all last summer, this is some fucking bullshit. <laughs> this is yeah. bullshit, yeah. Like you can just choose a, any player at in the summer, right before the summer, you yeah. see where you're missing a most mm-hmm. important piece, like Lorenzo Brown and Spain. You don't yeah. give a chance to your young guys. You just say, hmm, we have a list. It's basically club, club basketball. It's a free agency. Free agency. You National have a scout, you have a list. Okay, this one, okay, he doesn't want to play. Then this this guy, I don't know about him. Okay, Josh Nebo. Yeah, that's perfect with Luca. Yeah, we're going to give him a passport. That's why do we need a club competition when we already have it? And another just point about that. I understand teams that are just not on the basketball map doing that in order to increase the results a little bit so the basketball grows in in the country so for example i don't know you take albania or something you know we don't know a single albanian basketball player let's say they naturalize a player and they do well in the qualifiers and somehow make it to the euro basket and there they finish you know whatever 10th then there's going to be some hype about basketball and okay then maybe local players or local kids will want to play basketball. But when you have Slovenia, who has already Luka Doncic as their uh, main guy, the face of of the country, uh, you don't really need that. So you're just doing this to increase your results to, to, uh, you know, what you just said, filling the spots, you know, you're not doing this in order to grow basketball. And if you're not doing that in order to grow basketball, then I'm completely out. You know, when it was uh, Spain with Lorenzo Brown, I hated that. When it was uh, walk up with Greece, I hated that. You're just taking a spot away from a Greek player and you're not letting the real situation of basketball in that country reflect, especially if you have a big history like you do uh, with those teams I just mentioned. So, yeah, I, I just don't like what Slovenia is doing. And they've been doing this for the last five or so years with Toby. Nah, even more. They won the Eurobasket oh, in yeah, 2017. They had, they had Randolph. the Randolph. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, Nibo, yeah, I, you probably understand this better than me. So maybe it is a perfect fit because they played the, the, a similar uh, way in Mavericks. But I just thought uh, when Luca is with the ball, he attracts a lot of attention and, uh, I would rather ha- have someone who can stretch the floor a bit more than, so that that's was the idea I, of yeah. Mike, uh, Toby. Yeah, yeah. But yeah. now, I mean, Mike Toby has been, uh, not, not the same Mike Toby as a few years ago. So, uh, so yeah, that's why I, I, I was gonna argue against you, uh, in terms of perfect fit. So yeah, it's like, you know, strengths and weaknesses mm. that, that, all, all out, all five out lineup has its strengths. Mm. But at the same time, if you have Josh Nebo, Luca can just throw it so high, mm. nobody else can have it. So in that case, you need uh, defenders in the paint that help. And then Luca can just make this bullet pass to the, to, this, to the other corner and it's a free pointer for other guys. So, 
And I also have a great rebounder. And it, yeah. Nibo is a rim leading rebounder. And rim, they protection. Like rim protection. And maybe that was the, what they were lacking of in the last FIBA World Cup. Mm-hmm. And for sure, they're during their preparation to play if they qualify, or even maybe it fits the the, the, the matchup with Greece. They're preparing to face you know, Canada, Team USA, all these teams with athletic players on their roster. And maybe they were out hustled, out rebound, rebounded in the last FIBA World Cup, and maybe that was the idea of changing the direction of what kind of a free agent they need uh, to improve their roster. And, and it's fun because, you know, Josh Nibo has uh, been in Slovenia so many times. He's uh, very dedicated uh, to their culture and knows the language. So it's really fun. Uh, I'm not going to claim, uh, to complain about Josh Nibo or even Slovenia. No, These no, no. Are FIBA it's not roles. about, it's not are, about the this, player. It's not about the player. player. Yeah, but this is, that, that's, that's what, I'm just saying. where it should be our target. You know, that's not about the player, not about the national team. They're just... Yeah playing according to the rules and they're trying to improve their chances to make it uh, to the to the podium because I, I mean a lot of people say especially Serbians and Lithuanians that oh we take a lot of pride in in in, in the case that we don't rely on naturalized players at the same time if you're losing in those big competitions you're about to fire the head coach you're about to blame put all the blame on the players and it's kind of you know interesting you know example you're taking all this pride but you're but some but th- other guys uh are in a situation where they're kind of victims of others playing in different rules so you know it, it puts you in a situation where you also have to make some moves in order to to, to catch up with them that's Listen, how i see this come situation. on guys have have some i don't know I mean, whether I'm, I'm still stubborn. I'm, I mean, I, I'm against. Yeah, yeah. I'm against what what uh, is happening. The, the rules. I will just repeat our, ourselves. This is not against players. This is against the rules. I don't. I don't like the rules, and I, I I respect and I enjoy more Latvia's, for example, fifth place and their run in the World Cup than I do mm-hmm. Spain's gold in Eurobasket. Mm-hmm. To me, that's a better story. Yeah, fifth place better than first, and I, I will fight it. Yeah, and that's a good example because actually Latvia was in a position to get Latvian passport to Mike James and some players refused. They didn't want, not even, you know, n- not to single out Mike James, they didn't want any other naturalized player to join them. And that was a I mean, success story. I guess it comes down to national pride. If you have uh, in, in your country big national pride like we do in Lithuania or, or Serbians do or uh, I guess Latvians do as well. Uh, if, if you're if you're about your country as we are, you just you just don't want like how are you gonna celebrate this win if you know that your main main guy who got you the win was a uh, American? How is Spain celebrating? Well, they don't care. They don't have a national pride. I don't think they they they're you know mañana uh, you know do this tomorrow. We don't care about anything really. <laughs> they weren't happy. I mean, some of them weren't happy. But Lorenzo Brown got the passport mm-hmm. and was about to join. But the players when they start winning, yeah, when they start winning and got the gold. No, I mean, of course, complained. the other players are happy when they win. That, that that's yeah. out of the question i'm just talking about yeah. the fans and the general population i guess okay all right that's enough for this episode just a reminder to subscribe us on basketnews.com oh it's not the plus, end of oh the episode. my god we, we have, have some, some social media stuff yeah and of course tg shorts one and only to win the BCL mvp finals mvp to win the bcl and then to repeat the same thing in the euro cup mm. Shout out to the guy. Euroleague award coming up next. Man, Paris uh... is the Jalen Brunson of Europe, someone says. Oh, yeah. This is just a reminder from the Urbonus podcast that you had uh, with uh, Kevin in the summer, I believe, and where he said that uh, he doesn't like Mm. the idea. But now he was, oh, it's very obvious. So kind of, uh, (laughs) you know, ironic. An ironic situation that... uh, their season dependent on a thing that he was against. But there was uh, Edgar Solanovas as well said it that uh, he thinks basically what Ke- what Kevin Punter yeah. thinks, and I understand players. From no, this, this before point the of view. season, obviously, and obviously Kevin Punter didn't expect to be in that uh, you know eleventh position or so. They they were he mm. probably was thinking, oh, we're gonna be eighth, and then we have a chance to to get out of the playoffs. So. He was probably thinking we are going to be in the Sixth. top four. <laughs> yeah, 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 something like that. Mm. And of course, Matthias oh, yeah. and that's the way yeah, about the Netflix ridiculous. movie, just in case. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. They were just complaining about uh, the Netflix but, movie. But uh, what, what is the movie? Cheating the game is never gonna serve you. Karma is a bitch. Emily it, the criminal. Was, was that maybe there was, was some scene? Movie? <laughs> yeah, I think I think uh, that was the case. But obviously, ju- yeah, just obviously. just uh, you know, like I said in the very beginning when we talked about this, you shouldn't be in this situation in the first place.
Okay, this is it. The next episode is on Thursday. Wednesday. Damn. <laughs> it's on Wednesday. <laughs>